All right, looks like people are filing in from the M&Ms in the break. So we'll, uh, we got the door shutting, we'll go ahead and get started here. So first off, good afternoon and welcome to Southeast Dreaming. Our session this afternoon is about 20 minutes long and we're gonna focus on the five things you need to know about managing multiple business units inside of SFDC. Before we get started, I'll take a quick minute to thank each and every one of you for attending and also to our amazing sponsors to help make this event possible. As I'm sure you've gathered, my name is Joe Fiega. I am a manager of consulting services at Aperio, uh, 7X certified Salesforce consultant, and I'm relatively new to the ecosystem. In the interest of time, if you have any questions about my, my more detailed background, catch me after the session, and I'll tell you about the three big decisions in my life that led me back into technology, into the cloud, and ultimately to Aperio. Gloria, how about you? So let's kick this off. Step one, define your capabilities, right? By definition, a capability is what you see here on the screen. It is a collection of activities that enable the execution of a business process by people in order to achieve business objectives. Now, that's a, that's a fairly rough definition, but if we think about it, most of us are very familiar with capabilities. We just don't call them capabilities. So they're things like opportunity management, lead management. If we think deeper about leads, so acquisition, management, nurturing, scoring, conversion, all of those elements that exist in the sales cycle. We also have them inside of service, case management, escalation, closure. Things of that nature are capabilities by definition. Now, they're really important to understand your capability because it helps you define the landscape of your organization, right? How many of us in the room don't know what's going on in their system? They don't know every process, they don't know every piece of functionality. Maybe you're new from an admin perspective to an org. You don't have a chart to come in and look at and say, what is actually going on in my org? So you're gonna spend months sleuthing around that org trying to find out what's going on, looking through code, looking through configuration. You're likely to find stuff that doesn't have notes or comments or descriptions, and it's gonna blow you away, it's gonna piss you off that you can't understand what's going on in your org. We've all done it from an admin perspective. So it's really important as an admin, as a CIO, program manager, that you start defining those capabilities. Think of it as an inventory. You wanna know what is in your store, what is in your org. Here are all the things that my people are doing as they begin to manage their business processes. So what they're not is functionality or button clicks. If you're going to a page layout and you're trying to figure out individual field changes or pick list values, you're going way too granular up front. We encourage you to start high first with high level capabilities like case management, opportunity management, lead management, contact management, and then break those capabilities down a little bit further, begin to understand the versions that exist around them. You may have a business unit in EMA or uh, Europe that is using opportunity management one way. You may have somebody in APAC that's doing it an entirely different way. You may have folks in the US that are doing it that way. We see it with record types all the time, right? We look at a record type, you look at a process, and the statuses are all the same. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Why do we have two different processes if they're all the same status? 
more than likely it was crafted over, uh, over years at the org and no one ever took inventory of the capabilities in order to understand what was really going on. Now that you have them, the second step inside of capabilities is to organize these things, right? So imagine that inventory in a very robust fashion. We've got admins in the room. You can very quickly spin up a capabilities object in your org, set some lookup relationships to it, identify your business units, and then start organizing that in a logical fashion so you know exactly what's under support management. What are my capabilities that exist and who is using them? So we'll head over to Gloria and she'll talk a bit more about the business unit piece of this.
deal. Let's talk about it. So you've defined your capabilities, identified your business unit, aligned your processes, and now you've started to engage your SMEs. But how do you do it, and when do you do it, and why do you do it? Up on the screen is one of my favorite quotes of all time uh, from Mr. Brogan. The only difference between an audience and a community are the direction the chairs are facing. Now, that's a pretty provocative quote, if you think about it. What we are doing here today is we have speakers and we have an audience. So we are talking to you and telling you ideas, telling you things that we believe, things that we feel. However, inside of your organizations, that's not gonna be effective. If you are telling your stakeholders how they should use the capability, if you're telling them what their process should look like, you're not accounting for their, in, their insight and their experience in that process. So what we encourage you to do is to circle the chairs. Create a community, have a forum, or a center of excellence, or a tiger team, whatever you want to call it. I've heard it called dozens of things. But get people in a room where they're all on the same level and they can collaborate, they can argue, they can debate, they can share best practices, they can tell each other they're crazy and debate what really is going on. Because when you do that, you're gonna get a much more meaningful insight into how the business should operate under their, under their circumstances and the way they do it. Does that make sense? Circle the chairs, right? Not what we're doing here today, but near little tables. You could have those debates, and I guarantee you, you're going to come up with some really revolutionary ideas for your organization. Now, as part of the center of excellence, debate ideas, you want to prioritize changes as well. You want to figure out across the organization which capability should we focus on improving first. I have that inventory. I have it overlaid over my process maps. I know what SMEs are using it. I can look at that frequency. Even if it was in Salesforce, if I spun up that object and I had reference to it, I could run a report, I throw it up on dashboard. My opportunity closure capability is used a dozen times every, or by, across all my business units. Maybe I want to focus my attention on that first over something on case, cases that's used much less frequently. Right? I can begin to draw those conclusions. You also want to use your COE to establish the roadmap. They're going to start prioritizing things, they're going to put it into a sequence, and we're going to think about how we want to roll that out across the organization, and they can become your champions. They can begin to evangelize what you should do and how you should do it, take it back to their direct reports, and again, it's going to create a much more collaborative environment where everyone's on board with the overall solution and why we're going a certain way. Because when you try to simplify processes, it's going to rub some people the wrong way. Some people don't like change. Surprise, surprise, that's how it happens. However, when you really evangelize it well, people are going to be much more adapt to taking that, that change on. Other things I've seen people do with COEs that's really effective is set up release schedules or release notes. Use that COE to drive the overall communication of that. Now, the program says five things, but Gloria and I were talking about this last night, and we actually have a sixth one that we really want to add in there. So for everyone in attendance, it's an Easter egg that we didn't put on the original notes, but it's, it's here now. So Gloria, tell us number six. And 20 minute session is pretty tight to go over a lot of content, but we spent the last 20 minutes talking about some things. And if you were to take a key takeaway from this particular session, it would be that as an admin, as a developer, program manager, application manager, CIO, you have a responsibility, an obligation to build an application for your users that accounts for capabilities, 
considers personas, aligns your business processes, accounts for the views of individual SMEs, brings people together to debate those ideas to make sure we're producing the best product possible, and most importantly, is globally scalable so that as your organization changes, as your business changes, as your customers change, those processes can quickly adapt to it. And I think that's a wrap. So quick and dirty, five ways to use Salesforce to manage multiple business units.